Hello friends, uh, this is Ashram Shastri and uh, I welcome you all in this quarantine time for the biology neat topics. Today, without wasting uh, my time and your time, I would like to start with the topic called animal tissues. Only uh, the important topics which are supposed to be uh, important regarding the neat examination, such topics I would like to cover. Uh, I have also prepared a playlist and I will be adding more videos of important uh, neat biology topics to my playlist. So students who are aspir aspiring medical field or medical aspirants what I say, they can watch my videos and share with their friends. So let us start animal tissues and in animal tissues the topic I have, I have chosen today is blood its components and functions so if we talk about the blood blood is a motile fluid connective tissue so along with the lymph blood is the only tissue which can be motile that is it circulates in the body around 30 to 35 percent of the extracellular fluid forms blood or you can say blood is a part of extracellular fluid and it accounts for around 30 to 35 percent the amount of blood in a normal adult average human being is around 4 to 5.5 liters in females during pregnancy as uh, this is 5.5 liter it may increase around 6 to 6.5 liters only during the case of pregnancy so the pH of blood, if you talk about it, slightly alkaline and has a pH of around 7.4. So the point uh, which are being highlighted with an underline, you can consider them as the important points for your NEAT exam. And then if you talk about the components of blood, there are four important components of blood, plasma, RBC, WBC and platelets. Uh, RBC is also called as erythrocytes, WBC also called as leukocytes, platelets also called as thrombocytes. So without wasting much time, we will start with the first one that is plasma. So if we talk about plasma, it is an alkaline fluid which is uh, inter intercellular present between the blood cells and forms around 60% of the blood. It's pale yellow transparent and clear straw color fluid what you can say it contains water and minerals mainly if you talk about the mineral salts it constitutes about 0.9 percent of the plasma and mainly sodium bicarbonates sodium bicarbonates are present in the salts they act as blood buffers and maintain the ph of blood secondly if you talk about nutrients nutrients there are many things which includes glucose uh, you can talk about glucose, amino acids, phospholipids, etc. Proteins, if you talk about, around 7.8% of plasma proteins are present, which includes albumin, globulin, immunoglobulin, prothrombin and fibrinogen. Here, the prothrombin and fibrinogen are the precursors of clotting proteins and they are involved in the blood clotting mechanism. They are zymogens or proenzymes, what you call as. They are inactive in the form of prothrombin and fibrinogen. Albumins are the most abundant plasma proteins produced from the liver. Now talking about the erythrocytes or RBC. Okay, so firstly if we talk about the uh, erythrocytes. The important point about erythrocytes is that the most abundant cells in the blood are erythrocytes or RBC. So the full form of RBC is red blood corpuscles or red blood cells and because they are imparting a red color to the blood they are called as red blood cells and they are the most abundant cells in the blood uh, ranging around 4.5 to 5 million cells per cubic millimeter of blood they are circular biconcave enucleated the word enucleated means here that is they do not have a nucleus in mammals there are of course exceptions in mammals that is camels and llamas which are biologically relatives have a nucleated RBC. So they give red color to the blood 
due to presence of respiratory pigment called hemoglobin. Now if you talk about hemoglobin few points here, hemoglobin has a globin protein and a heme group. So it is a conjugated protein. So globin is a protein part and it has a non-protein part called heme. Heme constitutes around Fe++ group or Fe2 plus group. In mammals there are four heme groups attached to four globin molecules. Okay, so we'll continue with this topic now. So again, if you talk about uh, the hemoglobin amount in males and females, it differs. In males, the amount of hemoglobin is around 15 grams. Uh, if you talk about around 12 to 15 grams is the correct constituent. And in females, it is around 10 to 13 grams. So usually females have slightly less hemoglobin compared to male. The reason in the next continuing topic, I would like to tell you about that. So less amount of hemoglobin is a condition which is called as anemia. Okay, so lifespan of RBC is around 120 days or 120 days and they are destroyed in the spleen and liver. So spleen is also called as the graveyard of RBC. This you might have studied in your school also. So hemoglobin is then converted to bilirubin in liver which is a pigment of bile. The red bone marrow is the erythropoietic organ. Now here you should understand what is erythropoiosis. Erythropoiosis is a word used for generation of RBC or formation of RBC is called as erythropoiosis. And erythropoietic organ means the organ where the red blood cells are produced is called as erythropoietic organ. So red bone marrow is the erythropoietic organ here. Okay. And then if you talk about uh, the next point, around 1% of RBC are destroyed every day and they are replaced every day. So erythropoietin is a hormone which is necessary for the process of erythropoiesis and is produced from kidney and liver. So liver produces very less amount of erythropoietin but it also produces and kidney produces most amount of erythropoietin without which the process of production of RBC is not possible. Now testosterone in male, as I had told you, know, why males have higher erythro higher number of uh, amount of hemoglobin? Testosterone in male also stimulates the process of erythropoietin. So slightly the content of uh, um, RBC and uh, hemoglobin is slightly higher in males compared to females because of this reason. Secondly, coming to the third component of uh, the blood cells that is leukocytes. So leukocytes, if we talk about, they are, uh, they are also called as WBC. Around 5000 to 10,000 millimeter uh, per cubic millimeter of blood is the count of WBC. And particular words are there here which we are interested to talk about because they may be asked into exams. As leukocytosis is a word used for rise in the number of WBC. Leukemia is a condition which is related to abnormal increase in WBC, it's also termed as blood cancer. Then leukopenia, it's a condition where the WBC count is less than normal. So if we talk about types of WBC again, there are two mainly types of WBC, agranulocytes and granulocytes. The difference is agranulocytes, they have a clear cytoplasm without any granular substance in it. Whereas granulocytes, they usually have a lobed nucleus and have granular substances in their cytoplasm. So if we talk about the agranulocyte, the further two types of agranulocytes include still lymphocytes and monocytes. So lymphocytes constitute around 20 to 40% of the WBC and monocytes uh, generally contribute to around 2 to 8% of WBC. So again, if we talk about lymphocytes, there are two lymphocytes as we already know. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. The speciality of these is they are non-motile and non-phagocytic cells but they are involved in humoral and cell-mediated immunity. That means B lymphocytes generally if you talk about B lymphocytes they produce antibodies and if you talk about uh, T lymphocytes they involved in cell-mediated immunity. So this is the typical lymphocyte cell you can see here in the diagram. Then monocytes they are the largest type of WBC cells, remember this point, they are phagocytic and motile. So in size, size wise they are the largest type of WBC. This is a diagram to show about that. Coming to granulocytes if you talk about, granulocytes 
they are also called as polymorphonuclear granulocytes the reason behind this is poly means many morpho means morphological features so the nucleus generally is uh, morphologically different in each cell that means they are bilobed trilobed or many lobed nucleus are present in them so that's the reason why they are called as polymorphonuclear granulocytes also so there are three types called eosinophil basophil and neutrophil this word again is uh, based on the type of stain they accept eosinophil generally take up acidic stain called eosin and that's why it's called as eosinophil basophils take up basic stain and also called as basophils neutrophils generally take up neutral stain and that's why they are called as neutrophils now the most abundant type of wbc are neutrophils they contribute around 40 to 75 percent of the wbc and if you talk about basophils they are least abundant they contribute around 0.1 percent to point three percent you can add to it eosinophils they range around one to six percent of the wbc now basophils generally have certain important enzyme production which includes heparin heparin is an anti-blood coagulant histamine and serotonin which are allergic uh, important for allergic response in the body so you have to remember this heparin is an anti-blood coagulant produced from basophils okay uh, this is a typical structure showing a bilobed structure of eosinophil basophil trilobed and many lobed structure of nucleus in neutrophils you can see their cytoplasm has certain granules that's the reason why they are called as granulocytes okay so we'll continue with the thrombocytes now so thrombocytes if basically if you talk about thrombocytes now thrombocytes are also called as platelets they are colorless non-nucleated cell fragments now remember this they are not cells they are the fragments of cells having granules in the cytoplasm again so produced from the fragments of megakaryocytes megakaryocytes are bone marrow cells they are chopped off into small fragments called thrombocytes now thrombocytes are essential components for blood clotting mechanism and uh, certain terminologies again related to these you can add up here thrombocytosis is abnormal rise in the number of platelets thrombopenia is a condition where number of platelets reduces than the normal so what is the normal amount or normal number of platelets if we talk about it ranges around 2.5 lakhs to around 3.5 lakh cells per cubic millimeter of blood now the platelets generally release platelet factors also called as thromboplastins which help in the clotting mechanism of blood only during an injury if there is a physical injury to the body immediately thromboplastins are released from the thrombocytes and that's a very important factor for clotting mechanism so these are the components of blood i hope you all might have all listened and observed the points very carefully so you can pause the video in between and uh, take down the points as as and when required so the, those terms which are all underlined okay so the terms which are being underlined here they are all important points you can remember and all the best for your need whenever maybe the exams okay so don't worry about it utilize this quarantine time for your betterment of knowledge content wise increase your knowledge and uh, be successful in your future thank you don't forget to subscribe and share this video to all those students who require attention in biology with respect to small bits thank you